Blessed be the name of the Lord for bringing us together again concerning the reflection on this healing stream. The title for today's presentation is The Focus of Prayer. The Focus of Prayer. In Luke chapter 11, verse 2 to 4, the Bible says that I'm beginning from Luke chapter 11, verse 1 to 4. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased, that is Jesus, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so brothers and sisters, The question that we have to ask ourselves is what is the focus of prayer? Luke tells us that our focus in prayer is on our Father. It is an intimate time of developing our relationship with our Father. Why? Because it's a time where we are being ushered into the presence of God. And so here, prayer is being done in concert with other believers. So in this aspect, prayer is not exercised in isolation. It means we congregate together as brothers and sisters and then we pray knowing that our prayer life is dependent on the quality of our individual and corporate relationship with the Father. Together, we are acknowledging that He is our creator but also our sustainer, also our guide also our provider and authority. Why not? Because he's our father. And so in this aspect, we acknowledge that our father is not limited by earthly restraint. He's the everlasting God who controls all things. knowing that we can communicate directly with him. As a matter of fact, we do not need to wait or rely on any mediator. God is not limited by human restraints. Because it is clear that F has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. The Lord is in the heavens. And so in this aspect, prayer is a bridge from our earth-bound limits to the heavens' infinite resources. So, in a sense, what are we saying? We are saying... Lord, here we come with a holy reverence to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega. He is God the Father. He is God the Son. And then the Holy Spirit. His name is above every other name in heaven and earth. We worship him 
with thanksgiving. And come into his court with praise. Because some hundred and four tells us that enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. So anytime we enter into our prayer cross set, we enter, it's like enter into the gates of the throne room of God. But we do, we do so first with thanksgiving. We do so first with thanksgiving. I know others could start with confession. It's okay. But according to the psalmist, he says that he enters into the closet of God with thanksgiving. Nehemiah will tell you that he will always enter into the closet room of God, not with thanksgiving, but with confession. Daniel too will tell you that. So according to Nehemiah, according to Daniel, uh, for example, according to Nehemiah chapter 1, Nehemiah's prayer pattern has to do with entering into the throne room of God, the closet of God, the gate of God, with confession. But the psalmist says, according to the other of psalmist, we have to enter into the gates of God with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. So thanksgiving comes first before praise. We thank him for what he has done for us. We thank the Lord for his provision. We thank him for his protection. We thank him for his guidance. Even we thank him for the gift of life. For the gift of our salvation. So we are to exalt him with all his attributes. And then when you enter into his court, that is where the praise, we praise him with all kinds of praises and worship. And what are some of the kind of praises? We praise him by kneeling. We praise him by blessing, by saluting him. That is Barak. And the second one is by glorifying and praising for his mighty deeds with a loud voice. That is Shabbat. That is the Hebrew word Shabbat. And then the Hebrew word Yada means we praise him with extended hands. We lift our two hands. We extend it wide. It's a form of surrendering, but this surrendering is not about confession. It's about telling him that you own me. You created me. My life is in your hands. And therefore, I praise you. We also praise him and worship him By making merry and celebrating with thanksgiving. Hilawah. That is the Hebrew word. By making merry and celebrating with thanksgiving. So in the church situation, at times you have to make merry. And then we do what we call halal. By raging as though mad. At times people will even prostrate, fall on the ground, and roll over. And then we do taqwa by clapping hands together in rejoicing. We normally do it a lot when we are praising God. We clap our hands.
And then Ruah, another Hebrew word, by making an ear splitting sound with a trumpet, or by crying out with a loud voice in a warlike manner. In a warlike manner. And some of these things, if you are not very careful and you are in a congregation and the congregation don't have knowledge about this type of praising God, which is Ruah, they will think probably you are disturbing the order of worship or praises. So in a form of a, a warlike manner, then another Ruah is by raising a cry exulting out loud as over a conquered enemy. I can people praise the Lord and then they shout with phrases like hallelujah and then others will respond amen and that is where the psalmist tells us that when you start doing that, raising a cry, exulted out loud as over a conquered enemy, in the realms of the spirit, it's like the Israelites, the Lord instructing them to go around the walls of Jericho. The Bible said they shouted and they declared a loud cried voice and the walls of Jericho came down. And that is the picture here. By crying out with a loud voice in a warlike manner. And also by raising a crying, exulting out loud as of a conquered enemy. Then another aspect has to do with Zama. By hopping on cords. And making music with instruments, especially those who are well versed in handling the guitar, different kinds of guitar or instrument, be able to do that. I quite remember Ron Keloni. a well known. Christian musician in America as one of his instrumentalists who is very good at doing that. Because these are scriptural injunctions when it comes to praising the Lord, worshipping Him. Then the other aspect is by making a shrill sound of joy and gladness with triumphant proclamation, singing and rejoicing. Which is Rina. And then finally, Shaha. Shaha, the Hebrew word Shaha, by prostrating or bowing down in homage and reference and worship bound down. There was a time when one of my church members bowed down in front of the altar and he was prostrating, praising the Lord and thanking him in advance because there was this request that seemed so difficult in terms of human thinking and human belief system. But the only thing she thought she could do to bring down the hand of God to rescue the situation is to pay that homage before the living God. And so brothers and sisters, 
if even human beings could pay homage to fellow human beings, how much more the Almighty God who created you and I. May the good Lord strengthen you and may your focus be on our Father who is in heaven. Indeed, his name must be hallowed in all aspects of our lives. God bless you for listening. Bye-bye.